Galaxy season is going to start like right now uh, and everything you have up in the sky pretty much Seasons! No, galaxies, galaxies everywhere Yeah, just galaxies. There's like maybe two or three exceptions but all you have right now is galaxies until late April So we're gonna give you a few tips if it's your first time imaging galaxies and uh, hopefully they will help you um, make a better image of whatever galaxy you're shooting this season Let's get started Galaxies are huge and extremely far away, making them appear really, really small because they lie outside of our Milky Way. When you're imaging galaxies, you should use a long focal length. With the long focal length, uh, the object that you're imaging will look larger in your field of view and have a lot less black space around it. There's a huge difference between a typical small refractor telescope like a 344mm focal length and a larger telescope with a focal length of 2350mm. In this particular instance with the Whirlpool Galaxy, M51, the focal length of 2350mm is perfect. But the example used is a bit hardcore. <laughs> A few of the best galaxies out there, like the Andromeda Galaxy, Triangulum, and the Magellan Clouds, appear several times the size of the full moon, and so they can't fit in the field of view with the large telescope. Now if you look here, nothing has been changed besides the object that we're pointing at. In this case, Messier 31 looks great in the field of view of the small refractor, but only a tiny part of the galaxy can be seen when using the large Celestron telescope. This was with our Orion 8-inch astrograph, the largest telescope we ever owned at 800mm focal length. 800mm may not sound like much, but when compared to the other example like 2350mm, but it was absolutely perfect to image every galaxy in the sky. At 800mm focal length, we were able to capture a lot of the popular galaxies like the ones in the Messier catalog and we got perfect framing on the largest one out there, the Andromeda Galaxy. So if you're building a rig uh, just specifically for imaging galaxies um, and you're wondering if you should go with a cropped sensor camera or with a full frame camera, go with the cropped sensor camera. Uh, so there are several reasons for this. Uh, it's kind of, the main advantage is kind of linked to the first tip that Daya gave you. Uh, so with a full frame camera, you'll have a much larger field of view, which is not really needed for galaxies. So with a, a crop sensor camera, um, your view will be narrower and you will have much less black, useless space all around it. Uh, besides that, it is true that it is, you know, sometimes using a full frame camera is better for galaxies, only for galaxy groups. Like for example, if you're imaging Mark Iron's chain, um, you know, where there is a, a huge chain of galaxies, then it's true that using a full frame camera might help to include as many galaxies as possible. Uh, but you, if, if you're imaging just one galaxy, uh, it's always better to pick an APS-C sensor. The advantage of using that is mostly because, first of all, those are much cheaper than uh, the full frame cameras. And uh, also the file size is much, much uh, smaller. So it will take much less time to transfer all the files to your computer and it will take much less time to process all these files, which is great because it makes sense uh, because you're likely going to crop out the black space around the galaxy anyway. So might as well just focus on the galaxy itself and have uh, a nice um, rectangle or square around the galaxy itself. But overall, full frame cameras, of course, for uh, Astro in general are, in my opinion, better, uh, mostly because Nebulae, uh, there are so many nebulae out there that are so huge and the full frame cameras really get, uh, really are able to, to capture so much more than crop sensor cameras. But for galaxies only, I would always pick an APS-C camera. All galaxies, until proven wrong, have a supermassive black hole at their center. So a black hole is black. <laughs> but it has such a strong gravitational pull that it attracts an enormous amount of stars towards it. The bright star that you see at the center of galaxies is the combined brightness of all of these stars that orbit close to the black hole. Here is the best picture of a black hole ever taken as of 2022. It is the supermassive black hole at the center of Messier 87. 
When processing your data, be sure not to accidentally blow up the core of your galaxy. If you don't pay attention, the center of the object is going to be way too bright and will clip a bunch of pixels. This can happen when playing with curves, the histogram transformation, and any other brightness tool. A few deep sky objects like the Orion Nebula or the Andromeda Galaxy have such a bright core that it's a good idea to take short exposure shots before or after when imaging the object. You can stack the short exposure shots with long exposure shots to get a nice HDR image. So most galaxies are perfect as broadband targets, which means you can capture them very easily uh, with a DSLR camera or a one-shot color camera or also with a monochrome camera using LRGB filters. But beginners might not know this, but many galaxies out there also contain HA. So uh, it's always a good idea if your galaxy uh, that you're capturing right now has HA to try to implement HA in the final stack. So, um, if you're using a DSLR camera, what you can do is either modify the camera uh, to have to be more sensitive to HA, or you can use a clip-on filter, so an HA clip-on filter, to attach where the sensor is, and it will capture much more HA uh, signal from the galaxy. Uh, if you're using an OSC camera, you can use an HA filter uh, with a filter drawer, uh, very easy. And if you're using a monochrome camera, you can just add uh, some HA data with an HA filter after your LRGB uh, sessions. Uh, here is a picture of M106, for example. Uh, we took the picture first without any HA filter, uh, so LRGB, and then later we added uh, some time using an HA filter. So you can see here uh, LRGB as well as LRGB HA. Uh, and as you can see in M106, uh, there are some HA regions uh, where a star is forming, and you can see that with the LRGB HA photo, uh, much more uh, red uh, nebulosity in the spiral arms are visible there. And some other galaxies that have HA in them are, for example, uh, the Andromeda Galaxy, the Triangulum Galaxy, the Whirlpool Galaxy, uh, you also have the Cigar Galaxy, uh, NGC 300, or for example, NGC uh, 6946, which is the Fireworks Galaxy. Hi, we hope this was useful no. to you. <laughs> uh, it's too, not too tiny. We hope this video was super duper helpful to you guys. Uh, if you can think of more tips for galaxies only, uh, let us know in the comments and we will add them to the text guide on the website. So uh, we can add uh, you know, several more tips um, online if you... Can you... <laughs> I'm trying! I'm trying! Okay. So we will uh, find ways to add more tips on the text guide if you guys can uh, give us some more tips in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time and kiss Please, guys! guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too small.